Michael Imperioli, congratulations on Enemy of the People. And here I am with my dear friend and colleague, Annika Pergament, because you guys have somewhat of a history together. Goes From the Sopranos. <laughs> 25 years oh, okay. this old. year. I was a, a cast member of the Sopranos, actually. Yeah. She was a regular. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first night like on a Broadway stage at Circle in the Square, Michael? It was a big thrill, you know. I really got to see it though through my mother's eyes. She came to my dressing room after the show and she was just weeping. Like she was just, she loved the show and that was emotional, but like I think seeing me on Broadway was very, very moving to her. You know, I'm just very grateful. This business is very hard to have a career period, let alone a long career let alone a long career where you're getting quality work. I mean, I have a lot of fans like on Instagram and who come see the play who are in their 20s and early 30s who are just discovering The Sopranos and who like The White Lotus. And, and I'm, I'm grateful to be able to st still do this and have a career and have a, a career of working with really good people on, on uh, such exciting material like An Enemy of the People. An Enemy of the People follows two brothers, a doctor played by Jeremy Strong and the town mayor played by Imperioli. They find themselves at odds when Strong's character discovers a health crisis that, if acted upon, could pose financial ruin for the town Imperioli's character governs. A life-threatening Catch-22. Speaking of your current Broadway show, you know, the themes of this show, of a, of a politician completely selling out his constituents. This is a piece of theater that was written well over a hundred years ago. Right. Those themes really still ring true today. Mm -hmm. And you've been outspoken about politics in the past, mm -hmm. in, in, for example, the way this city is run. I'm wondering what your thoughts are when you think about those themes and when you think about where we are right now in this city. I think the city's run it pretty well, actually, at the moment. People use things that happen politically to further their political agenda on both sides of the political spectrum, you know. My character, he's making decisions that are not just out of some kind of corrupt self-preservation instinct. He's also like thinking, okay, if I listen to my brother, there's a really good chance this city's gonna go bankrupt, people are gonna go homeless, I'm gonna lose my job, uh, people are gonna be out of work. Is there another way to do this? We face decisions like that in this city all the time, you know? How do we make these things work in the most equitable ways that keep the city safe? It's not just, you know, black and white, you know what I mean? The production is set in the round, and while not immersive, there is some audience participation, sort of. Just talk a little bit about that experience, because there's that moment where you invite audience members on stage and a whole scene happens in front of them. There's this scene that's a quasi-town meeting. Some audience members are chosen to stay on the stage as if they're in the town meeting. And we kind of address the whole theater at that point as if everyone in the theater is part of this meeting. And it's always different, you know, because people get very vocal. I mean, we're opening that fourth wall up they really feel a part of it. At that point, I can look into the audience because they're part of the meeting at that point. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have to kind of tune them out. I actually can look in their eyes and stuff. And it's very moving to see people like lost in a play and looking at it with this sense of wonder. The setting for this sit down interview, Scarlet Lounge located on the Upper West Side. Having myself a time. The Cocktail Bar Jazz Club is the latest venture between Imperioli and his wife, Victoria. We're talking about being on Broadway right now and your whole background with theater, your background in film and television, this place, your band, your novel that you wrote, mm -hmm. Perfume Burned His Eyes, we'll be adapting that into a film. How do you juggle, I guess, all of that? You know, to me, there's not a lot of separation between life and work, per se, right? If I'm working on, you know, writing something, be it a script or a book, I mean, you're working, but it's part of your life, you know, it's not, it's not like punching a clock. I always say I don't really have any hobbies, so like work is, isn't really a hobby, but it's, it's what I do for fun in, in a lot of ways. If you now could go back and talk to your younger self, 
from 25 years ago. What wisdom would you impart? What advice would you give? Oh, it's very easy. I would just say that not to worry so much. Because that, that, there were a lot of things I worried about that never really came to any kind of fruition. Wasn't necessary to worry about them, but you know how life is. You get caught up with things and stress, especially raising kids, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd say that. I'd say, don't worry so much. It'll be okay. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. For more stories in your communities, click the subscribe button right here. You can also download our app or watch us on TV for the latest information, balanced coverage, weather updates every 10 minutes, and more. We'll see you then.